Variance is another commonly used measure of dispersion. In layman's terms, the variance is simply the average squared deviation from the mean. So we've already seen the squared deviations of the means because we saw the property that the, the mean minimizes the sum of squared deviations for any data set. And it turns out that that quality and the existence of variance is really the workhorse of many complicated statistical techniques. So we're going to see variance now as a measure of dispersion, but you'll see throughout the course that variance keeps coming up in different contexts that allow us to, uh, to apply statistical techniques in more and more complicated ways. So we're going to differentiate between the population variance and the sample variance. Mostly this is just a, a naming convention, but we're going to use lowercase sigma, that's this, and lowercase sigma squared to refer to the population variance, and lowercase s squared to refer to the sample variance. And all we're doing is taking the average squared deviation from the mean. So in the population case, we're taking the deviation from mu, the population mean. And in the sample case, we're taking the deviations from x bar, the sample mean. There is something a little bit strange going on. Uh, when we calculate the population variance, we, ca we divide by capital N, which is the population size. But when we calculate the sample variance, we don't divide it by just N, the sample size. We're going to instead divide it by N minus 1. And while this is kind of frustrating, I'm, uh, it's unfortunately out of the scope of this class to really explain why we calculate the sample variance with N minus 1 rather than just simply N. Here's an example of the variance being worked out in a table. This is the same table of values we had when I showed you the, the properties of the mean. So here we've got 17 observations and an x value for each of those observations. We first calculate the mean, x bar, to be 9.94. And we do that in the normal way, by summing all of the values of x and dividing by 17. So 169 over 17 is 9.94. The next thing that we're going to do is build up the expression for the squared deviations. The first step is to calculate the deviations themselves in this column. So we've just taken the x value minus the mean to calculate these values. And then we're going to square these values to get the squared deviations. And the numerator of the variance is just the sum of the squared deviations. So we need to add up all of these values in this final column. When we add them up, we get 642.94. That becomes the numerator of our expression over here. And we're going to divide by n minus 1, which is 16. So we get s squared equals 642.9 over 16, and that equals 40.18. Let's practice again uh, calculating variance using our very simple data set that we had before. So remember, in that case, we had four observations. And our, their values were 1, 2, 3, and 2. We calculated x bar, sum of xi over n, which equals the sum of the xi's is 8, and n is equal to 2. So it equals 8 over 2 equals, oh, excuse me, equals to 4, equals to 2. Uh, 8 over 4 equals 2. That's better. The next step is to calculate the deviation. So we've got xi minus x bar. x bar is 2. So minus 1, 0, 1, 0. Then we're going to need the square deviations, because recall that variance 
equals the sum of the square deviations over n. So the square deviations, 1, 0, 1, 0. And when we sum that up, we get 2. I'm sorry, this should be n minus 1, because we've got the sample variance. So we divide it by n minus 1. n is 4, so we divide it by 3. And we have that the variance of this sample is 2 thirds. In general, the squared deviation from the mean is 2 thirds.